Okay, sorry about that pause. I got booted out of the room. I was recording this in. So I just underlined this line here. I'm on WD-146 of the old textbook. Anyway, with this line underlined, the next thing they want us to do is italicize a, a word. So they want us to italicize prevent up here. So I just have to click in the word, make sure I'm under the home ribbon, and hit italicize. And now that whole word prevent is italicized. Now it wants me to go select the first word to format, in this case, the, the words down here like wet. And you double click on these, and you have to hold down your control key and double click. And I just noticed leather, leather, and then scrub, and rinse, and dry. So I highlight all those, and once we have them all highlighted, then it wants us to bold them, I believe. Click next page, yes, they want us to do bold. Now, I could have did them one at a time. Anyway, and click anywhere in the document to remove the deal. So now, it wants us to go in here and save this, and it now gives you this name, CSCWD1 Wash Hands Flyer Formatted. But to turn it in, we still need underscore our first and last name. So I'm just going to hit Save. Don't have to worry about doing the new name change. It does talk about one thing. This is called Backstage over here. Now, on one of your training checks, you'll have to go into properties and go into advanced properties and change the properties. I think you put keywords in here on one of the training checks. Or yeah. So anyway, we're not going to worry about that. Don't have to do it. Now, they want us to center a paragraph. So in this case, they want us to center the blank line below the number list to position the insertion point. Now, I should have had a blank line right on this number list, so I did not do that. So I'm going to click at the end of dryer, hit enter and hit backspace to put a blank line in. Turn my backwards P on, so that's where I just put this in. So this is where this black blank line should be because it wants to put a picture in here. Um, before we put the picture in, we should always center the picture. So with that line deals, we just hit center. So there, now it's centered on the page. Now I'm going to go insert the picture. So I go up to insert and then over to pictures. Now, the computer I was on, I'd put it in downloads, but I got kicked off. But I haven't been here on the college, so what I can do is go to the K drive, come into CS110 data files. So all the files for the book are kept right here. I have to be on the K drive, so you have to go to this PC, and then come down to the K drive, common drive. You'll see the names a lot of times. Come down to CS110 data files. Then I go in the program, Word, and I'm doing chapter, Word module 1, and I'm looking for this washing hands picture. Anyway, with that, it threw it in there, and it looks just like the book after we inserted that picture. It's huge. And so they tell me to go in and view one page and do some stuff and switch around. I'm not going to worry about that. The biggest thing is we need to resize this picture. So instead of playing with all that, at some point, we just want to make sure that we go up here, the format, the sizing over here, which it happens to be 5 and 7.5, and they want us to change this to about 2 inches and 3 inches. So once I put two in there and then three, oops, actually three in there, so it's two and three inches. So if I have the picture selected, I get this format ribbon. If you don't have that picture selected, you don't have the format ribbon up here. So with the picture selected, I have the format ribbon there. And I've set the picture two inches, a height of two inches, and a width of three inches. Now we're going to apply a picture style. And there are more picture styles down here. I hit a little down arrow to see all these. And it looks like they want me to pick the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're going seven across. I only have six across. So it's going to be one more than theirs. It's kind of got a, so it's this um, diagonal corner white. Snip diagonal corner white. That's not the right one. One more. So I want snip diagonal corner white. So this is the style. Make sure the name's right there. So that's the style I want when the name pops up. Now I put that style to it. Now with the picture still selected, I'm going to go to the effects button and I want shadow so over here is the picture effects and under shadow and what they want us to apply is perspective upper left so I got to clear down here under perspective and I want to make sure I get upper left it should be the first one right here so under perspective group this first upper left puts a shadow on that now it talks about picking different ones than that but that's the one we want so somewhere in the document other than on the picture to turn this off now, we're going to go into design, and this is really important. We're going here, we're going to rotate our colors. Under design, at the end of the document formatting deal, there's this colors. 
and it's kind of think of as a color wheel. And what they want us to apply is this blue color too. And I want to make sure you can see this down here because what's going to change is stuff that's colored in here is what it's going to do. So when I picked blue color too, this was red and I kind of went to a green color. So that's where we want to apply. Make sure it's blue color too. Now we're going to go up here and click the page borders. So up here under the design, there's a page border button, the very end deal. With this page border button, the first thing we're going to change, so it tells me that it wants the selected style, and it is scroll and and then click the third border style from the bottom of the list. So what I'm going to do is go clear the bottom, go up one, two, three. So this border style is the one I want. So what I did, I scrolled this all the way to the bottom, then counted up three and picked that one. The color here to be selected is the fourth one over here, and it's turquoise accent three, and I'm going to make sure. So click the color arrow, and it goes over the next page, and it's turquoise accent three, darker 25%. So I have the right color. Make sure I get that one. And then finally, I want to make sure that the three point, they don't have me change the weight of the deal. So click OK to add the border to the page. So I hit OK, and now I've got that border all the way around my page. You want me to position the insertion point in the paragraph be just, in this case, the paragraph contained the word how. So I need to scroll up here to how, be somewhere in that paragraph. You want me to go up here to make sure I'm on the layout ribbon. And then the spacing after is eight point right here. And they want as many times as necessary to take that to zero. So they don't want that spacing there. So you have to hit the down arrow to get it to zero. And then position the point in the next paragraph because the word when, we're going to do the same thing and take that down to zero. So click the spacing down to as many times as zero. Now position this point in the paragraph we just, in this case, the paragraph contains the signature line. So we come down to the very bottom of this document and pick the signature line. And we want the spacing before, so I have to be under layout. And the spacing before, they want me to hit the up arrow until I get 12 points to increase the space above that paragraph. And if text flows two pages, reduce the space above. It should be one page. And the way you can tell, right over here, it says page 101. Then we should be fine. Finally, we're going to change the document properties. So when I come in here to document properties, that's over here under file. And I click the file. That gives me the backstage view. And then click right to the comments property dialog box. So there's a comments over here to add comments. They want me to click in there. And they're going to have me add CIS. Oops. CIS 101 assignment. So I put the CIS 101, so I'm checking the spellings very carefully. So once I do that, then I can click the save button, so I can hit just save here, and that saves the whole document with that comment. I have the right name. Now it talks about going in here and going to file close and close the backstage view, the currently open document. I just, as soon as I hit save, it closed it. Um, it talks about closing the document, going to reopen it, which is not a bad idea. So if I go to file close, and then I go back into Word here and reopen the document, I have to remember where it lives, so I have to go to Browse, and it's over here on the K drives where I put it, so I have to come down to this PC, and then go to the K drive, and then come down to Assignments, CS110, AG108, and then come down to My Name, and then My Word Documents right there. Anyway, and then they talk about changing view and the width. Now we're going to scroll through the document and click Left Location to be inserted, in this case, in the Apply Soap. When you're looking through, I found it right here, you can always use Control-F for the find to find big documents, but this applies pretty easy to find. And we're going to type then. So I'm just typing then. So it's, now it says, and then apply spoke and press the space bar after the word. So we put that in there. Now once we click the home ribbon, which I already have the home ribbon selected, double click the word to be selected. So what they want me to do is now take this then out. So I double click that word and then hit the cut button. I would normally press my delete key, but cut cuts that then out. And they want us to put somewhere, so if necessary, scroll to, so all the number list appears, select that to be copied. So I cut that, we're not going to use that. So now they're going to come down here. And under this wet hands, so where am I at? Under how, wet hands with clean. And they want us to double click this word, clean, select that to be copied. 
and click the copy button. There's three different ways to do this. I always just right click if I have a word like that and copy it right here. I could have pressed control C or I can hit that. It really doesn't matter as long as you know which copy you're going to use. And we're going to come down and copy paste that clean down here in uh, number five dry using a towel. I want to make sure I'm right in front of towel. And then we're going to go to home paste. Once again, I could just right click there and put that paste in there, but it should say clean towel right there. Now, the options button, and it talks about paste options menu, contains options to put this in. So click the paste options button, display paste options, click anywhere to remove the paste options. What we're talking about is these options here, and we're not going to mess with it, so there's no real reason to even do it. But just showing there's different options. You can just do font, match the font, whatever. Don't want to mess with that. I'm just showing you where it is. Now, scroll to the necessary to select. So this before, during, this line right here, we want to select it. If you come right out here and click one time, it will select it. And what we're going to do is called a drag and drop. We have to be on the gray area. When I move this up, see that black bar come in, and I want to make sure I don't let go until I'm right in front of after. So what I did is just switch them two lines around. Normally, I personally would use a cut and paste, but that's the way. He has us come down here and switch to reading mode down here at the bottom right. Look at this. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to go back in and print it right out. The biggest thing is I'm going to go back and check the view. Make sure it looks exactly like theirs. All the space and everything. The margins. He has us you know, talk about getting help in that. We are done. So what I do is I save this. I close this. Now I need to log back in to canvas to get back to this where I need to turn this in so I'm going to go in here to canvas go to my canvas login log into canvas actually I don't have to I have send gauge marks so when I go to sendgage.com and I can sign in here and then it'll remember me because I've been in there enough times and sign in. I could have went back into Canvas, clicked the link to get back to my class. But if you just log into Cengage.com when it comes up, it takes a while to log in there, you should be able to get right back to your class. So remember your login. I need to go to this assignment. So when I open up Cengage here, I need to go to today's date. I'm submitting this assignment right here, textbook project. So I open it up, start it again. And like I said, right up here in the information is very important. I'm allowed to submit this three times. So when I hit start, I have not did this till I do this upload be the first submission. So I click here. Now you might, when you open up, it might be here. You just hit continue to get here. But I click this upload button. I keep my file in the K drive. So I come over here to assignments, come down to CS110, AG 108, come down to my name and click on my file. And then this quick, I hit submit, and it'll put the check marks. It's amazing how fast it grades it. Now you can go to view reports here. And what it'll do is give you a report of how you did. So it's another Word document. Open this up. So I've got 97 out of 100. And what it'll show me is incorrect text of off of should be uh, corrected. So I'm not sure where this is talking about. So as I walk down here, it will all show me my document, and it'll have a comment right here showing me where that was. So even though I looked at this pretty close, I go back and look at the original one. Before, during, and after preparing food, the incorrect text off of should be corrected to off. So where is of? It must have been above this. So I'm going to enable editing here to try to find this. Now, 97, I'm, as the teacher, going to give me a 10. But the incorrect text of off of should be corrected to off. So when I go look at my document, and remember, i got to correct my document. So I'm going to open up my document, and it'll be this last one that I used, formatted. I'm just going to press Control-F, and I'm going to put off of. So this right here, they're saying, I screwed this up. I should have took this of off out of here. So I'm going to delete this of. I'm going to save this. So now that's corrected. I'm going to close this document. Make sure I close. I'm going to close this report. I'm going to go right back into here and close this. I'm going to start this 
textbook project again. I'm going to hit start here. I will go to upload and I fixed this one so you always want to make sure which one you did it on. Submit this with that correction in there. Go to view this report and now I have 100 out of 100. So at this point I want to snip this score so I just type SNIP. I click down here at the bottom bring up the snipping tool. Go to new and I just want to make sure I get the assignment name, my name, and my score. So I need this piece of information. I'm just going to save this as anything. I'm actually going to save it in my doc or pictures where I usually save it under junk. And I'm just going to call it something I know, Word CH1. It doesn't matter what you name this, so Word CH1. Now when I come back in here to Canvas, I need to go submit that. So I'm going to come up here and log back into Canvas. So I just type canvas www.cc.edu to get to my login, log in there, sign in, go to my class, and go to modules, go to today's date, textbook project, and now I go, oh, I got to be a student, I'm sorry, mine will look different years, I can go settings and be a student to do this, so I got to go here, go to student view, so you can see how this is done. Anyway, under student view, now I go to modules. Go down to this assignment textbook project. Go to submit assignment, choose file browse, go to this PC, go to the K drive, go to assignments. Oh, I saved this in pictures. That's the other thing. Don't want to turn in the file to me. I want to make sure to turn the right thing. So actually, I put it in pictures under junk. It's my score. I don't want to turn in the L. And I named it Word Chapter 1. So we want to make sure that we turn in the right score. So once I click that Word Chapter 1 picture, PNG file, then submit it. Another thing you might want to do, and I only see the last file you turn into me. So if I go to grades here, now I will see that I missed the bio. I got to go do the bio. Yesterday's training, I didn't submit the score for it. And the Word 3 SAM module is not supposed to be there. I'll delete that out. We're doing this project here. I'm glad I went in here. But I can open this up and see what I turned in there if I click on it. And then I can make sure I turned in the right thing, which was my score. And I can open this and see. It's going to ask what to use photos. But yeah, I turned in the score for that assignment. So that is it. Good luck with the assignment.